A diamond is forever, so the saying goes, and IOLs need only last a lifetime. But still, as that can be a while, they should be robust, should they not, Dr. Chang? Yes, definitely. Excellent. Well, we look forward to your presentation here. Take it away. I'm going to go a little bit more clinical. I'm going to share with you uh, my experience with the Lantus Comfort and the Comfort Toric. The, the lens is a one-piece posterior chamber EDOF lens. It's not a bifocal. It's an aspheric surface. The ad is 1.5. And uh, what I like is, you know, in Hong Kong and in Asia, we have so extreme amount of myopia. And this lens goes down to minus 10. So it gives us a very wide range. And uh, for myopes, you know, it works very well. And the astigmatism actually goes up to 5.25. So the toric lens covers up to about five diopters. Could you tell us when did EDOF lenses become so in vogue? It seems to be that way a few years now. Yeah, well, okay. Um, yeah, I have used um, diffractive lenses since 2003. And uh, because of the diffractive lenses, they all give you halos. Okay, and not halo is not so much a problem. They give you glare. Uh, the reason I believe because of glare is there's a lot of light loss transmis transmission. So because of diffractive optics, as you know, it has different orders. Order zero and one, order zero is for zero for distance, order one is for near, but the rest of it is wasted energy. And that turns out to be scattered light. So you have a lot of patients have glare plus halos because of the diffractive optics. Uh, you know, we have to, I had to explant the lenses. And uh, nowadays, diffractive lenses, granted, have much less glare, but it still gives you significant halos. And um, what I like so much about this lentus comfort is, and I'll share with you later on, and you saw with Dr. Versace, very little um, halo and glare. And I'll give you the grading, I'll show it to you uh, uh, as we go on. Excellent. So we looked at 12 eyes from 10 patients, eight were monocular and two patients with binocular. Mean follow up is 84 days. And I use the Master, Lenstein, Pendicam, and I use um, the SRKT, Barrett, and for the short eye, half a Q. There's very little exclusion criteria with this lens. Um, severe, you know, bad cornea disease, a lot of cornea problems, even dry eye, I can use that. Um, Cause it's, it's, uh, it's not a very demanding lens. And also, I do tell my patients, you, in dim light, you can have this angel wing phenomena. And very rarely, in fact, I've only had one patient that actually says, oh, no, I don't want any of these halo glare. So, uh, so patient selection is very easy. I almost do it like a monofocal lens. Um, you know, I put in the elderly because they less, had less visual requirement for near. Um, it's got excellent distance vision, I'll share with you. And I even put it in, in patients with macular disease, macular degeneration, epiretinal membrane, a diabetic, maybe even some background diabetic retinopathy, uh, or even, you know, there's a, there's a plus eight lens in the lentis now, which they are under investigation for uh, severe macular degeneration. So you can use that. Why? Because, you know, the, I'm concerned about diffractive lenses because if you have an ERM and it gets worse and you need to do surgery, it's hard to do the surgery. It affects the optics, makes it more difficult. So with this, uh, in fact, the lower segment magnifies your surgery. So there's no problem at all in terms of needing future surgery or doing retinal laser in diabetics. Whereas if you're diffractive optics, you have to worry about that. So there's hardly any uh, 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 exclusion patients. I use that a lot in my post-LASIK patients, especially in the high, uh, high myops. People who are minus 12, minus 14 before, uh, before LASIK, now they come back with cataracts. I just put these in and have no problems with it. And I use that a lot for people who drive a lot at night. So people who are outdoors, they have a lot of outdoor nighttime activities. I do monovision um, uh, uh, with that, along with that, and it also works very well. Now, in terms of distance vision, you can see 100% a 2025 20, or better. So distance is very good. And about 60%, this is uncorrected. This is best corrected. So uncorrected about 60% 2020, 20, but 100% 2025. Intermediate vision is also very good. Basically, 
if we can see 2050 or J5 or better for intermediate, you basically do not need glasses for your computer. So you can see that this lens is J3 already at uh, intermediate distance. So none of these eyes needed glasses for their computer use. Well, it's, as you know, a plus 1.5 ad. So the near obviously is not going to be as strong, um, but you gain by very little light night vision problem. Um, for, you know, it's about 50% J2 is not too bad and about 86% J5, so the magazine. So you would need to do a monovision strategy in, in your patient. And our next uh, speaker is going to uh, share that with us. Dr. Now, Chang, just a quick question there. Uh, you know, based on the near, intermediate, and distance vision profile, are there certain right. types of patients whose lifestyle would be a match based on these lenses? Yeah, well, in um, somebody who doesn't need a Lanier requirement, they use their cell phone, and mostly it's the computer and distance, you know, and particularly, say, golfers, you know, because, you know, they want to putt well, and this will give them that good vision for the putting, and they see that 300-yard drive. So for golfers, it's very appropriate. Um, and as I said, for drivers, because it has very little night problem, which gonna, I'm going to talk to you about on this slide. So, uh, but somebody who is more uh, near dominant, then you have to do monovision. Mm, then, and it still works quite well. Sure. Yeah. Talking about the halo, glare, and starburst, um, five is severe halo or glare starburst. Zero is none. And now I actually comparing with the study we're doing with the symphony, and you can see the halo is 0 0.3, which is minimal, okay? Now, they, this is actually really not a halo. This is the small, that angel wing that they sometimes experience in very dark environment. In daylight, you won't see that. In bright environment, indoors, you won't see that. It's only in dim light and outside in the dark when you're driving, you may experience that. And um, so you can see that it's, it's very minimal. But what I like, and in fact, um, when I remove these multifocal IOLs, the reason, main reason I have to take them out is glare. As I mentioned to you, is that waxy vision is very annoying because they're all the time, during the day and at night. Okay, so the lentus comfort has no glare. I've not had any patient, you know, this is study here, but even other patients that I've done, you know, we've done a fair amount already, but even the symphony can give you some glare. But although it's low, but there's none with this and no starburst. Okay, uh, symphony still has some starburst. Now, in terms of overall satisfaction, zero is very dissatisfied, five is very satisfied, and the average score is 4.7, surprisingly high. Okay, and symphony actually the same, but it's high. Uh, I would have thought may, maybe we're, we, you know, we choose the right patients, obviously. So we are able to satisfy the patients with a score of 4.7 out of five, five being most satisfied. And spectacle freedom, 80%, pretty much. Okay, compared to symphony, 71%. So this is complete spectacle freedom. That's not too bad, 80%. Now, this is a study we're also looking at the tolerance to astigmatism. Okay, the yellow one is the lentus comfort. Okay, the dark green one is the symphony. And then you have the two one in the middle here. This is the trifocal, okay, the panoptics and the pod F. And this is the bifocal, the ZMB. So you can see that the, uh, the EDOFs, okay, the comfort and the uh, symphony can tolerate this one. Uh, you can see that the comfort can tolerate up to one diopter of against the rule of stigmatism, better than the symphony. And it is as good as a symphony and it can tolerate about 1.25 diopters of astigmatism um, with the rule. So this is a very, you know, it, it gives a lot less pressure for the surgeon because it's such a forgiving lens when it comes to astigmatism. So, you know, 1.25 uh, for with the rule and one diopter of against the rule of astigmatism. So it has a high tolerance compared, as you know, 
with the trifocals, they can really only tolerate about 0.75 diopters of astigmatism. So you have to be much more accurate. And here again, as I told you, it's a need off. The lens is not a bifocal. In the middle range, it gives you some distance intermediate. So you can see that from about plus 0.5 all the way to about minus 1.5, which is 67 centimeters near, it's a need off. You can see extended depth of focus. So it is an end off, eat off lens, it's not a bifocal lens. So what about the Comfort Toric? We've implanted quite a few of them, but be unfortunately because of COVID, the patients haven't been coming back. So I am not able to share with you with too many numbers, but we did manage to get seven eyes. So I'm going to share with you those. And these were patients with long follow-up, they're 128 days, um, and the stickness is up to two diopters. I used the Barrett Toric calculator. And um, the near, not as impressive as the uh, monofocal, but toric should be as good as the non-toric. You know, the non-toric, as you saw, 100% 2025. Uh, but still, this is 100% 2040. So patients do not need glasses for driving. Intermediate is still excellent. J3, 100%. Uh, nobody, as remember, J5, you don't need glasses. So none of these patients require spectacles for computer use. And near is obviously it's a it's a, it's a plus one point five lens, so the near is not as strong uh, compared to the intermediate and distance. As I said, this is mostly an intermediate and distance lens, an excellent distance vision. And you, as you can see, the mean un, uncorrected distance vision 2020, 2025, uh, intermediate again twenty twenty five seven uh, twenty thirty. Okay, very good near. Well, it's not a near dominant lens. And again, these patients have minimal halo 0 0.3 and no glare. As I mentioned again, glare is the annoying waxy vision, which this lens does not have. In glare, you have it in the, um, uh, in the diffractive lenses. Okay. They haven't quite managed to do a hundred percent like transmission yet. So every lens will have glare. Um, and very high satisfaction again, 4.7 out of five. I'm just going to share with you one more quick case very quickly. This is a post LASIK case, um, 48 year old male, uh, moderate myope, uh, surgery was LASIK was done in 2007. Uh, he comes back with a cataract and we put in the lens in 2018. Pre-op, he was 20, 70 plus. This is his refraction, um, minus 0.75, minus 0.75, uh, which uh, because of the cataract's vision is not so good. And, uh, this is his refraction now. Okay, and uncorrected 2020, best corrected 2015. Intermediate, again, very strong 2023. Uh, and this is again, and near is not too bad 2040, which is like a J3, which is quite good. So, the, um, again, you see this from about plus 0.5 all the way to 1.5, it behaves as an EDOF, uh, extended depth above 2025, and no halo, no glare. This is patient who has a lot of high order aberration from the LASIK correction. And these are early days uh, of, you know, without the aspheric programs. So these are just a regular plano treatment when these patients had a lot of night vision problems. Uh, but you put this lens in, no problem. And overall satisfaction in this patient is five out of five and no need for spectacle. In conclusion, the lens discomfort gives you very good distance and intermediate vision with minimal to no dysphotopsia or night night vision problems. You can, you can consider monovision for improved near vision, uh, no glare. So I use this, uh, as I said, there's the biggest reason for lens exchange is glare. So these patients, none of these have glare and no concern about pre -op, higher order aberration. So it's great for high myopic post LASIK cataract patients. It does not affect future posterior segment surgery. So you can put it in diabetics. You could put it in patients, even with ERM, even macular degeneration. It actually helps them because it magnifies the reading, the near, okay? And there's minimal to no night vision problems. And uh, I use that a lot, particularly for patients that drive at night. So uh, somebody who comes to me with all our night vision concerns, I wouldn't use the diffractive lens. I would use this as a, uh, uh, a lens for the uh, near vision. Thank you. Well, Dr. Chang, it sounds like the Lentis IOLs are quite multifaceted, much like my diamond friends in a way. Thanks for this excellent presentation. Thank you.